Shortly after Obama's re-election in November, he carried out a purge of several generals and a two-star admiral. Not only were these top military brass axed, but they were forced to resign or step down in disgrace by this regime despite a lifetime of service to their country. Here's a timeline in chronological order of the systematic removal of top military brass that occurred in the span of only a month. On September 21st, Brigadier General Jeffrey Sinclair was relieved of command and charged with sexual misconduct. On April 18th, Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta announced that General Ham was being replaced as commander of U.S. Africa Command, or AFRICON. Panetta gave no explanation for General Ham's removal. On October 28th, Rear Admiral Charles Goyer, the commander of the John C. Stennis Carrier Strike Group in the Middle East, was abruptly removed from command and returned to the United States. On November 2nd, Commander Joseph Darlick was relieved of his command for alleged drunkenness. On November 9th, General Petraeus, former commander of the U.S. forces in Iraq and Afghanistan, resigned as head of the Central Intelligence Agency. On November 13th, amidst news stories reporting that General Allen, who was General Petraeus' successor in Afghanistan and top nominee for NATO's Supreme Allied Commander in Europe, was embroiled in a potential scandal involving emails with Jill Kelly, a socialite at MacDill Air Force Base. Allen has insisted that there was no improper relationship between himself and Ms. Kelly, but his career path to the top NATO post had been snuffed out. On November 13th, General William Kip Ward, former head of U.S. AFRICON, was stripped of his fourth star by Leon Panetta. Following a lengthy DOD Inspector General probe, that found that Ward was guilty of lavish spending and extravagant travel. Doesn't it seem odd that after a lifetime of military service to their country, these seven men holding some of the highest military ranks were all of a sudden, within the span of a month, accused of, not necessarily convicted of, scandalous behavior and summarily forced to resign in disgrace by Obama's regime. I want to show you some other information regarding these men that is not being discussed in the mainstream media and how this information does not bode well for Obama and his regime with regard to the September 11th Benghazi incident. General Carter Ham. The dismissal of Ham is interesting because there are reports that he had assets in place set to rescue Libyan Ambassador Christopher Stevens and his team, but he was ordered to stand down. During the Benghazi attack, General Ham was receiving the same emails the White House was receiving requesting support as the attack was underway. Ham got a rapid response unit ready with the support of Admiral Goyer and communicated, with, communicated that with the Pentagon. When he was told to stand down, Ham responded he was not going to obey the order. Less than a minute later, his second in command, Assistant Commander General David Rodriguez, arrested General Ham, and he was summarily received, relieved of his command. Five weeks later, after the Benghazi attack on October 18th, Obama promotes Rodriguez and Leon Panetta takes center stage in announcing that General David Rodriguez, the man who arrested General Ham for attempting to avert the massacre in Benghazi, would be assuming the role of su Supreme Commander in, of the U.S. AFRICOM operation, a ranking position previously held by General Ham. Referring to Rodriguez's nomination, Panetta, Panetta was quoted as saying, he's a proven leader and a key architect of the successful campaign plan we are now implementing in North Africa. Regarding the Benghazi incident, 
The only thing I can say is he's proven that he will follow orders without question, even if they result in the de deaths of the men under his command. That's not a leader. That's a tool for the regime. Rear Admiral Charles Goyer. General Ham was in contact with Admiral Goyer during the attack at Benghazi, and he agreed to provide air support and intelligence to assist General Ham in protecting his troops on the ground under attack. The plan was that one of the Special Forces soldiers located on an adjacent rooftop would paint the Libyan mortar team that was targeting the CIA annex, and Goyer would provide airstrike capability. He too was immediately relieved of command, pending an investigation of allegations of inappropriate judgment, according to Leon Panetta. I guess it is now considered a dereliction of duty, or according to Panetta, quote, inappropriate judgment for officers and members of the armed forces to do their jobs and keep the oath they took when they joined the military. General David Petraeus. While Benghazi Gate was unraveling just before the November election, allegations of an extramarital affair with one of the most highly decorated generals is thrown into the arena of public opinion weeks before the election. Why? Could it be that in his current position as director of the CIA, Petraeus had damning intel regarding the events and motives behind those events that transpired during the hours of the Benghazi massacre. Could it be because Petraeus told the Senate and House Intelligence com Committees on September 14th of 2012 that the mob attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi three days earlier was a spontaneous reaction of Lib Libyans angered over a YouTube video? A cover story now proven to be a lie to misdirect us from the real truth. And that is that the CIA had an interrogation facility at the compound, and the compound was being used to negotiate arms deals with terrorist organizations. Is it a far stretch to conclude that Petraeus had detailed knowledge of military grade weaponry being funneled to terrorist organizations like the FSA? by the CIA through Ambassador Stevens to further destabilize Syria and Iran to facilitate the collapse of their governments so they could be overrun by the Muslim Brotherhood, just like Obama's regime did in Libya. Or how about this crisis to cover up a staged kidnapping of Ambassador Stevens in order to negotiate the release of the blind sheik in a high-level hostage exchange. In June of 2012, Egyptian President Morsi pledged to secure the release of the blind sheik. How could he make such a bold promise unless he was privy to the plans of the staged kidnapping? There are a lot of questions surrounding the convenient timing of Petraeus's resignation. For instance, it's been reported that the FBI background check he was having an affair with Paula Broadwell back in March of 2012. Isn't it odd that FBI agents would be reading the emails of the CIA director to his mistress and that the director of the FBI, who briefs the president weekly, did not make the president aware of this? Assuming the president was briefed, what can we conclude based on the fact that to Petraeus, director of the CIA, was open to blackmail and yet remained in that position from March through November of 2012, vulnerable to compromise. Could it be that Petraeus's resignation had nothing to do with an affair and everything to do with refusing to take the heat off Obama by publicly stating it was the CIA who gave the order to stand down in Benghazi? And what about the nine lawsuits against Jill Kelly involved with both Petraeus and General Allen? These lawsuits amounted to tens of thousands of dollars against her and her husband. In Trial Law 101, wouldn't this go to motive? 
Why isn't this angle being discussed by the prostitutes in the mainstream media? This would certainly go towards the questioning if not destroying her credibility as a victim in this setup. General John Allen, after weeks of being smeared and his reputation dragged through the mud, Allen was cleared of charges by the Pentagon of allegations of inappropriate behavior involving Jill Kelly, which he denied all along, but not before being replaced by General Joseph Dunford as commander of NATO forces in Europe. In 1934, under fears of a coup, Hitler purged by execution at least 85 people, many of them military brass he feared were not 100% loyal to his cause. The Night of the Long Knives was a turning point for Hitler's re regime as it established him as, quote, the supreme judge of the German people. Since ben the Benghazi incident on September 11th, Obama has purged, demoted, or forced into resignation at least 50 ranking military officers. The Russian military's GRU, Foreign Intelligent Unit, presented a report to the Kremlin leadership in late September that said Obama removed one of the United States Navy's most powerful admirals from his command in the wake of Benghazi's 9-11, specifically because he fears a military coup is being planned against him. Narcissism is often accompanied by paranoia. Some believe the president manufactured his anger in the rush to defend UN Ambassador Susan Rice for her role in the Benghazi fiasco. The president stated he did not appreciate those who were besmirching the reputation of one of his appointees, yet he's been busy removing our top military commanders at lightning speed. Are we seeing the beginning of Obama's Night of the Long Knives? Would it be a fair assessment to conclude that before he can ensure the total destruction of America by surrendering us to global governance under the direction of the United Nations, would he have not have to first decimate the military and replace patriots with puppets he commands 100% loyalty from? We are living in very interesting times. Please leave your comments for discussion below and please share this video.